What's up guys? So I've done a lot of videos where I analyze top level matches in fighting games, some of the great moments throughout the history of competitive fighting games as a genre, but that's not what we're doing today. Today we are looking at celebrities playing Street Fighter. We're going to be doing a bit of a react, a bit of an analysis, what are they doing right, what could they stand to improve on, and uh, just generally enjoying watching these people who are well known for their roles in the entertainment industry seeing what happens when they step into my domain, which is fighting games. As someone who has been playing in tournaments since 2009 when Street Fighter 4 came out, I'm going to tap into that experience and uh, let you guys know what I think about these celebrities playing Street Fighter. So let's jump in. All right, so the first clip here, this is between Shaq, Shaquille O'Neal playing Ryu, and Natalie Eva Marie, uh, who is from the show Total Divas and the WWE. Uh, they're playing some Street Fighter V, and <laughs> let's let, 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 let's talk about this, okay? So, Shaq has clearly identified crouching light kick is a strong move. Um, I, I, I think, obviously, these players are both beginners, but we are seeing the barest bit of strategy here, which is when the opponent is close to you, you should use faster, shorter range attacks. When the opponent's further from you, that's when you can use longer range attacks. And look, he even went for the fireball there when he got some space. We Oh, okay. We see a special move there. The, the Tatsumaki. Nicely done, Shaq. Quarter circle back kick. He clearly knows that input. So stuff like the this, this early jump. I think that's heavy kick from Lara here. Usually stuff like this is kind of a sign that you're just pressing buttons. That's not really like that's not going to hit anything. That jump roundhouse, it, it, no one is ever going to get hit by that for any reason. So I think she's maybe going a little too ham on the controls. Maybe mashing a little bit too hard and uh, not exactly having a defined strategy that's being put into play here. Yeah, there we see another early jump roundhouse. Oh, but here in the corner, this is actually what I like to see. The standing medium kick from Laura pushing forward and continuing the plus frames there. Continuing to just jump over and Shaq lands the Tatsu and that closes it out. So I don't want to make fun of these guys. First of all, they would definitely beat me up in real life. So I don't want to burn any bridges here. Uh, but I think for players who are clearly beginners, they showed, you know, some things were definitely right here. They knew some of the inputs for their special move. That's big. Like I said, we saw them taking advantage of faster moves, using moves in the optimal range. I especially liked the use of stand medium kick by Eva Marie with Laura. Uh, I would say the number one thing to improve on is just mashing less. This is definitely a trap that new fighting game players fall into is when you're not confident, when you don't feel comfortable with the controls, you just default to pressing as many buttons as fast as you can. And that usually doesn't really help. You have to have enough experience to where you know, okay, if I press this, this is what my character is going to do. And you can put those thoughts together of, okay, this is what I want to do. And then that's what you can make the character to do. There's really no shortcut to getting to that level. It's just simply that something that comes with time. So I hope that these guys keep playing and we'll see. Maybe they can get there. I would love to see it. I would love to see more people getting into fighting games. All right, next up, we've got two professional wrestlers here. We've got Kenny Omega, who is on the AEW, and then we've got Austin Creed, who wrestles under the name Xavier Woods for the WWE. I love watching these guys in the ring. I think they're fantastic, and uh, I'm interested to see what's going to happen when they get into the digital ring here in fighting games. But I know these two are a lot more experienced than the last one we watched, so this should be interesting. I think Kenny might be doing a button check here. <laughs> I don't want to say that for sure, but I think he just pressed every button in order, so I guess he was just trying to see if the buttons work, but we are seeing some corner pressure here from uh, Austin Creed's Ibuki jumping in. Now, I, I will say, there, there is a concept in fighting games called footsies, if you guys don't know. Footsies is basically when you're, you and the opponent are playing the ground game. Uh, the long and short of it is you want to get into the range where your moves are going to hit, and you want to get out of the range where the opponent's moves are going to hit. That, that is the, the most stripped down simplification of what footsies is. And they're doing a decent job at it, I must say. They're utilizing the walk speed. Look, you can see he's using moves at their max range, which is what you want to do. Uh, but that was a nice combo there from Kenny Omega. He got a target combo with Cody cross-up. 
So cross-ups are big in fighting games. If you don't know, you hold back to block, but if you jump over the opponent's head, that switches the direction they have to block. And uh, Austin Creed opened up Kenny using that into a nice little combo. But there, we're going to see a big flub there from Austin Creed. So there's a concept in fighting games called hit confirming. So the idea behind hit confirming is that comboing into special moves and super moves is generally going to be your biggest source of damage. But the problem is if the opponent blocks your special move, you're open and you're probably going to eat a big punish depending on the move. So instead what you want to do is use a series of moves that gives you time to confirm did it hit or did the opponent block it. And then if they do block it, go into something safe or just end the string there. But if they get hit by it, then you can go ahead and finish out the combo. So that's what hit confirming is. But unfortunately what we see here, Austin Creed does not hit confirm into that uppercut. And he eats a little bit of a punish there, but not too bad. But I like this use of normals to check the aggression from Kenny Omega there. That was very nice with the crouching medium kick, one of Ibuki's better footsies normals. Kenny getting some advice here. I like it. Let's see if he can recover. Ooh, gets jumped in on, but not too much of a punish there. Just a throw. Ooh, okay. Could have got a decent punish on that whiffed up kick, but it's fine. Raw Super there gets blocked, but no punish. Very unfortunate here. I like the anti-air jab. We're not seeing too many anti-airs hitting the opponent when they're jumping in at you. We're not seeing it too much. Uh, but that would definitely be something that would make both players a little more successful here. All right, he's got the knife. He's thrown the knife. Oh, he's got the knife back. Okay, nice little confirm into a combo there with the target combo from Cody. Getting pressured in the corner. Ooh, and gets the throw. Very nice from Austin Creed. Let's hear what Kenny has to say about this. It's called a learning process. It's going to take a little bit of time, but little by little, I'm going to get better and better, Creed. And when I do, you're going to be in trouble. Now, you see, <laughs> this isn't like the new day where you guys peaked a long, long time ago. I'm only <laughs> going to get better, and when I do, you're going to be in trouble. Okay, obviously, these guys are incredible on the mic. These are some of the best trash talkers in the business. But in terms of the gameplay we're seeing, I think they're, you know, they're doing a decent job of backing it up as well. I skipped ahead to later in the set. It went all the way to 4-4, if you can believe it. That was a very nice hit confirm into the target combo from Kenny Omega. Jumps out of the corner, does Austin there. Okay, a raw DP works out. DP short for Dragon Punch, in case you didn't know. Hopefully, uh, the experienced fighting game players, hopefully you guys won't mind that I'm sort of trying to simplify things so that people who don't play fighting games can understand what I'm talking about in the video. So hopefully that doesn't get too annoying. Nice pressure in the corner, but the wake-up jab gets Kenny Omega out. Thrown out of the corner. Here comes the V-trigger. Kenny Omega blocks it. Nice patience there. Okay, gets a, a big sweep to get the knockdown. Meets him air to air. Nice early button there using the EX Ninja Dagger. Oh, very nice whiff punish from Kenny. Can we watch that real quick? Look at that. The crouching medium kick whiffs gets punished with a sweep. That was clutch. That was actually uh, like a, a very high level maneuver right there. Goes for the EX Zonk Knuckle. Cancels into V-Trigger but gets killed by the crouching medium kick. Okay, it's coming down to it, guys. Into round two here. Ooh, big cross-up. Huge cross-up, but not much of a confirm. Kind of uncombos there, but it doesn't matter if Austin Creed's not going to block. And there's another huge whiff punish. Look at that. But he drops the combo on the dizzy. You hate to see it. Jumping in with roundhouse. Okay, raw special moves not getting blocked in there. No hit confirm. Just let it rip, and it worked out. Seems like Austin Creed may be mashing a little bit, or at least... Not blocking on wake up. That's definitely what got him killed that round. When you're waking up, usually the safest option that you should always default to is blocking, at least if you don't uh, know what else you want to do. Lands a jump in, doesn't manage to get much off it. Continuing to jump in, I don't think we've seen a single anti air from either competitor here. That's definitely something that would make a big difference. Wake up uppercut gets him out. Ooh, crush counter with the far range forward heavy kick. But a nice little target combo confirmed there from Kenny. He's using his his foot speed, his walking, very, very well. And here he V-Trigger cancels, but the V-Trigger comes back. But it's not going to matter. He presses a bunch of buttons and Kenny Omega takes it. So honestly, that was, that was a very good and entertaining match in my opinion. 
Uh, there are definitely things to improve on. I think the biggest one is anti-airing. Uh, keep in mind, in Street Fighter, when you jump, you cannot block. And so if someone jumps at you, you got to be ready to hit them out of the air to stop them from getting their aggression going. I'd say that was the number one thing they could improve on. Second thing would maybe be getting punishes, like if you block a Dragon Punch, if you block a Super, something unsafe. You got to make sure that you get some good damage for it, or else the opponent is just going to be able to keep getting away with stuff they shouldn't be able to. But other than that, I think they played pretty well. To be honest, I think that if these guys played like that, they could go to EVO and get at least one win. I think they could beat somebody playing that well. And this was a few years ago. This was in 2018, so they've probably improved since then. But that was good. That was a good showing by Austin Creed and Kenny Omega. Well done. All right, guys. Now we're getting to... A notorious match. I think people who are involved with the fighting game community will probably remember this if they saw it when it happened. This is Lupe Fiasco, a rapper. He made the album The Cool, very excellent album. And then we got Daigo Umehara, considered by some to be the best fighting game player of all time. Uh, he was responsible for this little moment that you may remember. <laughs> But here he is, they're doing a exhibition match, and I believe this was before the launch of Street Fighter V. This was a promotional match, nothing on the line, uh, just to kind of get people excited for this upcoming game, Street Fighter V. And so we're seeing Daigo playing Ryu, kind of one of his like trademark characters. He played Ryu a lot in Street Fighter IV and in other games as well. Lupe going with Ken. Ken, definitely a favorite of a lot of people who played Street Fighter 2 growing up. I remember people loved this character. Let's see what happens. All right, round one. Here we go. Let's see it, Lupe. Okay, throwing fireballs, jumping in. No anti-air from Daigo. Sweep gets blocked, but no punish. A little out of range for his own sweep. Daigo throwing fireballs. Daigo is known as one of the best fireball throwers in the business. He, uh, he has mind-reading powers. He can always tell when you're going to jump and when you're going to sit there and get hit by the fireball. Look at the spacing and the footsies from Daigo. Very impressive, but he misses the anti-air on that jump. And here come the dragon punches from Lupe. We all know it's sort of a stereotype among Ken players that they like to dragon punch whenever possible. It is invincible, so it's going to go through stuff. So, uh, you know, you may, as well, you may as well use that powerful tool while you can if the opponent is not going to block it and punish it. There is another blocked uppercut, and Daigo gets a very optimal punish there. Nice stuff, taking round one. Daigo looking good. Lupe laughing it off. You love to see it. Both players just out here to have fun. Nice uppercut from Daigo. So that's the Ume Shoryu. <laughs> if you guys don't know, Daigo Umehara is famous for the Ume Shoryu, meaning when he does a psychic uppercut, he just knows it's going to hit. But then Lupe, he's got the Lupe Shoryu. <laughs> I think one of the commentators coined that when he, when he does the Shoryuken, that's the Lupe Shoryu. Okay, Daigo going for a parry, and it whiffs, and he just gets punished for it. All right, hits him with the fireball, but look, da Daigo is bleeding here. He's got quite a bit of a life deficit to make up. Crouching medium kick into fireball, very classic move from Ryu. There, the Shoryuken whiffs, gets punished a little bit, using the Tatsumaki to push into the corner. Speaking of Tatsumaki, there one whiffs, but Daigo doesn't get an optimal punish. Definitely Ken's uh, roundhouse hurricane kick works a little bit weird in this game. Wow, look at that. The whiff DP going over the fireball and getting the throw. Lupe can't believe that he's taken a round here. He's losing his mind. On to round three. By the way, I believe this is a first to three set. I know that watching this, but I don't know if the players know that. I'm not sure if they know how much they're playing to, but it's first to three games. All right, gets the jump in. Daigo, no anti-air. Look at this life deficit. Lupe is winning again. Look, Lupe gets the uppercut. Daigo backdashes into a fireball. Daigo finally gets the anti-air dragon punch. Oh, misses the anti-air dragon punch there. Lupe using the Tatsu to affect his air momentum, and there's a wake-up shore you can... Oh, the far-range roundhouse crush counters... I'm tripping over my words here because I'm so excited at what we're seeing here. Lupe uh, does a blocked Shoryuken, and Daigo misses the punish, and Lupe lands the throw, and he takes game one. Guys, <laughs> he's popping off, and I would be too, man. If I ever took a game against Daigo, this is a fun fact. I did play Daigo once in casuals at uh, Seasons Beatings 2013 or 2014. We played casuals. I did win round one, not the game, but just the round. 
and then he just destroyed me for the rest of it. It was a lot of fun in Street Fighter 4. All right, this is a really long set. I don't have time to show the whole thing, so we're skipping to the final game. If you guys can believe it, it got to 2-2. Two, two. And here we see Daigo with a very nice hit confirm. He baits out the Dragon Punch, and look at this punish. And he gets the Dizzy on Lupe. What's the follow-up combo going to be? Very nice stuff there. And he blocks the Dragon Punch on Wake Up. Oh, look at that. The optimal crush counter punish. A very near perfect there. The only damage he took was block damage when he blocked the uppercut. Daigo on match point here. But again, I'm not sure if the players know that. He lands a nice little hit confirm into Tatsu there. He parries the jump in, tries to go for a punish. Oh, but that time he just eats the jump in, gets jumped in on. Both players throwing fireballs here. Ooh, Daigo walking into a fireball, tries to parry a jump in, misses it a little bit. Wake up Shoryuken from Lupe, that EX Shoryuken from Ken. Lots of damage on that. Oh, he lands the jump in, Daigo no anti-air again. Nice max range sweep there inside of his V trigger, but he gets thrown. And now we got ourselves a final game, final round situation. It's coming down to it. Daigo with full super. The meter very important in this situation. And here's him with a DP. Haven't seen that all match yet. Okay, gets the nice crush counter, and he's going to confirm into super here. Look at this damage. 50% on that punish, and he tries to parry Ken as he's waking up with Dragon Punch. Guys, come on. Why would you? Okay, jumps in, jump roundhouse into Dragon Punch, jumps back, jumps back in. Daigo gets the anti-air Dragon Punch, tries to parry the wake-up Shoryuken, but okay, listen. I've, I've maybe been kind of ragging on Lupe for the Dragon Punches. He's, he's spamming it a lot. But this is actually genius, because what he does here, Daigo's parrying the wake-up Dragon Punch, and Lupe does V-Trigger activation. And look, Daigo whiffs a parry. Because Daigo doesn't see that. He just keeps parrying. And then Lupe gets to punish with another drag. So that was actually genius. That actually worked exactly the way that I'm sure he expected it to. And now he throws Daigo. And now... Okay, Daigo. Crouching medium kick and EX fireball. Gets the knockdown. Activates V-Trigger. Oh my god. Let's... Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Oh... Frame by frame, you can see he's going for the Dragon Punch. He's going for the Shoryuken. But I believe in this version, Ryu... I don't know what version he's doing of his Heavy Punch Shoryuken. I believe it doesn't have full invincibility. So he gets hit out of it. And Lupe takes it. And you can see I was mentioning that I didn't think the players knew that this was first to three. They both seem like they expect that they're going to keep playing. Maybe they thought it was first to five because it's an exhibition. There's a lot of confusion, but now the, the information is being relayed to the players that Lupe won. They're tell yeah, did you know that you won? Yeah, bro, you won the match. I know, he can't believe it. No one else watching could believe it either. <laughs> what an upset. The celebrity beats the pro player. And look, the crowd's going nuts. Now, obviously I'm happy for Lupe. Um, now, I, I'm not going to say... Okay, listen. So th there have been a lot of suggestions that this was a, a rigged match because it's just for fun it's just to advertise the game now do i think that they told daigo okay you have to lose no and do i think that daigo said to himself okay i'm gonna lose the match to to make lupe feel good like no i don't think that he intentionally lost but at the same time do i think he was playing as hard as he could trying to win obviously not like if we look at this right if daigo's really trying to win he's not gonna knock you down and then walk up and parry on wake up that makes no sense right like if daigo's really trying his best he's just gonna block because that's so much safer right but he wants to parry because he wants to put on a show he wants to create a fun moment and he just like did such a huge combo that he's like, how can I lose at this point? So, the, you know, I don't think he was fully optimally trying to win. And then the other thing is, at the very end, obviously he, he wanted to anti-air here. Obviously his intent was, I'm going to Dragon Punch and I'm going to win. Because you can see, this is a Dragon Punch. If you frame by frame reuse Dragon Punch, that's what it looks like. He wanted, he wanted to anti-air Dragon Punch, but it didn't work out and Lupe got it. So... I don't think Daigo threw 
But at the same time, you know, it's for fun. There was nothing on the line. I think he was just trying to put on a good show. And it was. It was a good show. Even though this is a very notorious match, people feel like it's illegitimate. People feel like it's rigged. I think they did their mission of uh, putting on a good show for everybody, and it was a lot of fun to watch. But let me know, guys. Did you have fun watching this video? If you'd like, I could try to do more like this in the future, but uh, make sure to let me know down in the comments. And if you did like it, if you could hit the like button, I would really appreciate it, as well as the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my future uploads. I upload lots and lots of analysis videos like this and videos going through the history of the fighting game genre. So I would really appreciate it, guys. But with that, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.